Hey, what's going on guys? This is Dan Sleecher with another segment of Sleecher Reviews Albums, and today we're going to be talking about Code Orange's new record, Underneath. This was a, uh, an album that came out just back in March, and I've been really excited for this. Uh, to preface it, I'm a huge Code Orange fan, and I've been looking forward to this album since late December. When I saw that they wiped their Instagram clean and they were starting posting, when they started posting really cryptic messages, I just thought, yeah, we're gonna get, we're getting something new. Code Orange is a hardcore band from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and about eight years ago, they went by the name Code Orange Kids, and at that time, they released the uh, their debut album, Love Is Love. Return to Dust, and then two years later in 2014, they dropped kids from their name, became Code Orange, and they released the albums I Am King in 2014, Forever in 2017, and now Underneath in 2020. And these guys are a literal force to be reckoned with at some points. When you see them live, you will understand. But let's go right into the album right now. So it starts off with, the album starts off the track called Deeper Than Before, and this isn't really a musical track, so to say, it's more or less like a noise suspense track to like really build up for the album. Their programmer Shade actually was very much influenced by not so much a lot of different m musical entities. I mean, obviously he was influenced by musical entities, but he was also influenced by a lot of John Carpenter movies, specifically their soundtracks. He would actually listen to them over over and over and watch those movies just to see how the um, composer would build suspense as an event was going to happen, how it would unfold. And you hear that a lot within this album, and you would also hear it a lot in their earlier work, especially with Forever. But with this album, he uses that to a really in interesting degree. He uses a lot of that suspense to really just put that put the audience in that constant belief of what's going to happen next. What's, what's he going to do? What's he going to drop? This actually really works much better in my opinion live because when you go to see them live there's always this foreboding sense like okay what are they going to play next where you're always in this environment where you're just like where you're kind of on your toes thinking what's going to happen then we go right into the into uh the first official track of the album called swallowing the rabbit hole and this is one of the most standout tracks on the album um it's one of the most code orange tracks i can that they can really put out and it has Probably some of the most interesting guitar work, some of the most crushing and punishing riffs that I've heard in the that I've heard throughout their career. And there's even like this weird tinge of like digital silence, which may be a little um, off-putting for some listeners who may have who may not be familiar with their music, but I think it works pretty well. It could be disorienting for some, but that's just my opinion. The next couple of tracks are also really fantastic tracks, and they are the tracks In Fear and You and You Alone. And these really define who the band has become in the year 2020. With really big hooks, really big sounding tone that can re that really just gets you going. And if I could just hear these tracks live, I would probably just go absolutely crazy. Now, I want to get into something that I noticed throughout this album that I also kind of noticed a little earlier in their, in their career. It's this. So they signed to Roadrunner Records at the end of 2016. For the, if you're unfamiliar, Roadrunner has signed a lot of major, major heavy metal acts like um, like Slipknot, Korn, any other really other big metal act you can think of. They all went through Roadrunner, and now that Code Orange is being signed to them, you hear something a little different that I wasn't really expecting. But at the same time, I kind of knew it was coming. And that is a little bit of commercial sounding songs, songs that I can definitely, I really thought to myself, this could really definitely be on rock radio at this point. And the tracks that I really wanted to discuss were Sulphur Surrounding, The Easy Way, and Ottoman Carbine, and A Sliver. And I'll even throw in Underneath because that was the first track that they put out. With Underneath, it starts, it was a very unconventional song for me to listen to because I was, when they ever, whenever they put out like a new song, it was always this big, really heavy event. Like I was expect, I wasn't like, ex I was kind of expecting something a little bit heavier in that sense. Like for example, when they dropped I Am King in, in 2014, when they were promoting that, they dropped the actual song I Am King and that was one of the 
biggest tracks I've heard at that time. And then in 2016, when they announced Forever, they dropped the track Forever, and that was equally another really big heavy hitter of a track. For them to really put out a song like Underneath, it shows that not only has is their guitarist Reba really putting in a lot more effort I mean, not not necessarily effort, but she's doing she's having a lot more of like her time in the spotlight when it comes to um, writing music and writing more melodic tracks. They're also going into that more commercial, marketable approach. I wouldn't necessarily say this is Code Orange selling out at this point, but I want to say that this is them just kind of grasping out to another to an audience that may not really be familiar with hardcore and they're just at this point where they can really blur the lines between what's traditional in that heavy music and what's really out there and odd with heavy music and to go in with that um to start with the odd actually the the one odd track that i would um really say really stood out to me was the song cold metal place which is their more or less harsh noise track um, it starts, it really just goes, it really is just Shade going absolutely batshit insane with all of his programming and all of his keyboards, all of his synths, and it really just, it kind of feels like what a heart attack would sound like. It just spastic crazy energy all throughout, and, oh god, it's, it's really, that's actually how I can really describe this album at some points. Absolutely spastic. And that was something that... Forever and I Am King didn't necessarily have, which I'm really happy that they harnessed it with underneath. So I also want to get into some stuff really quick that I just really genuinely did not like with this album. For one, the length I felt like was a little, a little bit too much for me. A lot of their albums were always done within half hour, maybe like 30, 35-ish minutes, which is totally fine. This goes on for almost 50 minutes which I have nothing, I have no qualms against that. Personally, I have, I have no problem with someone in this day and age releasing an album that's almost an hour long, but the issue that I have with it is that there's a handful of filler tracks on here that I felt like there's at least like three or four, two or three filler tracks that I felt like could have been completely cut out. And the first one that I wanna mention is actually a song that they put out a week before that uh, the album dropped called Sulphur Surrounding. This was actually one of their more commercial, more commercial friendly tracks. And there was just something about it. Mostly what I thought about it was this wasn't really a Code Orange song in my opinion. This just felt like they were just kind of writing something that they could just easily put on rock radio. And it just kind of lost me there. And I can also say the same thing for the song The Easy Way. And I think The Easy Way personally is my personal worst song on the album, only because it has a really, really cheesy kind of like, it has a really, really cheesy hook and it kind of borders on being almost dad rockish, and that's something I just really can't get into. Especially from a band like Code Orange, who I've been following since 2012, and to see them kind of release something like that was just like, uh, just really, really disappointing in my opinion. But that's not to say this album is not without its really, really standout moments. When this album hits, it hits, and it hits you really fucking hard. For example, the song Erasure Scan might be debatably there might it's in my personal fav it's my personal favorite on the album. It's one of the more faster, crazier, spastic tracks on this album. And if you really want to know how the best way to describe Code Orange in this day and age right now in 2020, I would say listen to Erasure Scan and then, you know, just get back to me on that. And I also wanna wanted to touch back on the commercial tracks again. Although I was kind of dogging on some of these tracks, there are two on here that actually really stand out to me. The first one is a song called Autumn and Carbine, which comes in at the, the later half of the album, and it's completely fronted by Reba, their guitarist. And, I'll, and I will just say this, they're extremely talented songwriters, and they can really do no wrong when it comes to writing in that style, but I prefer something like Autumn and Carbine and even their the one of the le later songs, A Sliver, more because it just kind of shows where their influences really lie. I keep hearing a lot of throughout this album, a lot of Nine Inch Nails, I keep hearing a lot of Slipknot, I hear a little bit of Korn, I hear a little bit of Alice in Chains, and 
that was just something that I wasn't really expecting. Um, mostly the Alice in Chains part, not really the um, Nine Inch Nails part, because I can just hear that from almost a mile away. <laughs> Overall, Underneath has a lot of really, really fantastic moments and a lot of really, really, I hate saying this word, but has a real a lot of really dumb moments in it as well. If you've been a fan of this band since the very, very beginning like I have, you're definitely going to like it for what it is. And if you do end up liking a lot of the commercial stuff, hey, that's totally fine. But um, I would definitely say that this is 100% their most accessible album due to some of those more commercial tracks. I would say, yeah, it went a little overboard as far as length goes, but the only way I would really say to combat that is if you can just really nix out maybe Sulfur Surrounding and the easy way, this could have been a much better album in my opinion. But listen to the album. If you want to talk about it, leave a comment down below. I would say go check them out on their tour, but this dang virus ruined everything and kind of postponed that. So when this whole thing blows over, definitely catch them on tour because they are one hell of a band to see. So what did you guys think of the album? Did you listen to it? What are your thoughts and your opinions? Leave them in the comments below. And also let us know what we should be reviewing next. This is Dan Salitro. Peace out.